he did also act maliciously or out of hatred or ill will in defaming her on that day. And here comes the punitive damages award of $65 million, Alicia, for a total of $83.3 million. That's a high eight-figure award. Church, he goes to church. You want to talk? Let's he talk about that. Let's talk about that lawsuit then. Go ahead, Jessica. What are your thoughts? My thoughts are that you shouldn't sexually assault people and then you shouldn't defame okay. them. Damn! Yeah, she's got a point. It means it's not a guilty verdict. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> Long week ahead. <laughs> yes. After Trump was ordered to pay $83 million to E. Jean Carroll, a woman he was found liable of sexually assaulting, he was asked how he planned on paying said penalties from this trial, to which he either lied or forgot, or knowing him, maybe both. Um, do you plan to try to use campaign funds or tax money to try to pay some of the penalties in uh, the New York defamation and fraud cases? I don't understand what. Are, are you thinking of potentially trying to use campaign money to pay some of those penalties that you, that you might incur? What penalties? In the New York fraud case, the defamation case. I, I didn't do anything wrong. I mean, that's been proven as far as I'm concerned. And actually, we won in the Court of Appeals. You probably saw that. That case has been largely won in the Court of Appeals. Uh, that was a political case coordinated with the White House by the Attorney General, I assume is what you're talking about. And we won that case largely in the Court of Appeals. That's a ridiculous case. Despite confusing Nikki Haley with Nancy Pelosi, if you remember, when he was asked about E. Jean Carroll, he said, she's not my type, only to then confuse her seconds later with one of his ex-wives. And after repeatedly saying E. Jean Carroll is not his type, the moment he was shown this photo of Carroll, she's on the left there from years ago, asked who it was, Trump in the deposition says, it's Marla. Marla Maples is his second wife. We have in front of you a black and white photograph that we've marked as DJT 23. When asked to identify the woman in the picture, Trump mistakes Carol for his ex-wife, Marla Maples. It's Marla. You say Marla's in this photo? That's Marla, yeah. That's, that's my wife. Which woman are you pointing to? No. Here. Carol. Oh, so that, the person oh, okay. you just pointed to was oh, Eugene. Around Fox News, the five, the topic came up, which, as expected, allowed for some back and forth. And by back and forth, I mean for out of the five hosts doing everything possible to avoid talking about the fact that their Republican frontrunner with a recent court ruling has been ordered to pay $83 million for defamation verdict, $25 million for fraud judgment, $5 million for sexual assault verdict, $1.6 million for tax fraud. And, of course, the other host, liberal voice Jessica Tarlov, reminding them about all this. Because this is not the real election strategy of a winning campaign. This smacks of desperation and the fact that he's clinging to Taylor Swift, who he couldn't even pick out of a lineup without Jill going like this. That's Taylor. Tells me everything you know about is Joe Biden. Is the strategy to owe $83 million for defaming a woman that you sexually assaulted? I would love Taylor Swift's endorsement. Any politician would. I but I like you people what like I just Kid said, Rock. Because that was the news from the weekend on that side. And then Joe Biden was 15 minutes endorsements. late to church. And you think it's the end of the world. Late to church. He goes to church. He goes to church. You want to talk? Let's he talk about that. Let's talk about that lawsuit then. Go ahead, Jessica. What are your thoughts? My thoughts are that you shouldn't sexually assault people and then you shouldn't defame okay, them. Okay, was he found guilty of sexual yes, he assault? Was. He was. a he criminal? Was, by a jury. was a criminal? It was, it says, no, it was civil. civil. Yeah. Oh, that means it, it doesn't a... count? Okay. It means it's not a guilty verdict. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, uh, uh, it's always nice to bring something up that has that nothing to do to with your... the topic. It does. You said the campaign strategy. You know, just That's... stop interrupting everybody. <laughs> 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 Long week ahead. Yes. Have you ever encountered a candidate who would turn down an endorsement or a fundraiser with people who are popular? Now, there are some endorsements that you get where you have to run to a camera right away and say, I hate this person. I have no idea why they said that they like me. But if Donald Trump got the opportunity to have past former Republican presidents, like if George W. Bush wanted to be seen with him, I, he would welcome him in and he would say something snarky, I'm sure, about his change and heart over the Iraq war, but he would say, we're all Republicans, right? I w want your vote, and here's W endorsing me. Same thing, we talk about these pop stars, right? Donald Trump only has Kid Rock and Vanilla Ice. I'm sure he would like to have more. And people who have the same kind of appeal, we talk about how they could win all the time, like Oprah and Michelle Obama and Taylor Swift are people who have fans across the country regardless 
of their political belief. I mean, trust Fox to respond to this $83 million settlement with, well, what does this mean for Biden's campaign? But it's a little bit like the police. So you have a rogue cop. You know what a rogue cop is. We're going to have to do this immunity for the president. That's why judges and the court system are so important and central in the age of Donald Trump and his takeover of the Republican Party and his promises of a strongman style dictatorship. A would be strongman says he is immune from the legal system. He is unconstrained by any institution and by anything in our government. E. Jean Carroll is the one who called that question. And there he was and he was Nothing. It's next level deflection, right? Up there with attributing the current record-breaking stock market as a victory for Trump because, yeah, people are just excited about him possibly getting back in office. They say the stock market will boom if I'm elected. If he's elected, the stock market will crash. Okay. 12 seconds later. Finish the week, uh, 10 year about 4.14. And Trump has said the market is rallying because he's going to be re-elected president. Others believe the market is rallying because Joe Biden is going to be defeated. Whoops, I, I think that's the same thing. Still, others believe the market is up because the Fed's going to slash interest rates and juice the economy to get Biden reelected. I personally don't buy into that. Donald Trump has said several times in the last few days the stock market's rallying because it's anticipating that he will return to the presidency. Oh, oh. Listen, I would be insulted if people thought I was that gullible, but they don't need to think. They know that in this MAGA cult following, they'll dine out on that. I wouldn't be surprised if Fox are just merely a few segments away from praising Trump for Biden's strong marriage because, well, Trump showed him how not to do it. Well, I think I'm a lot sharper than her. I would do this. I would sit down right now and take an aptitude test and it would be my result against her result and she's not going to win. Nikki Haley is in charge of security. We offered her 10,000 people, soldiers, National Guard, so whatever they want, they turned it down. They don't want to talk about that. That isn't a mix-up. Uh, the reality is Nikki Haley, she wasn't speaker. Nikki Haley is relying on Democrats, just like Nancy Pelosi, uh, to try to have a desperate showing in New York, in New Hampshire. Wait, but he was so talking President about January 6th. Trump, President Trump has not lost a step. There's no bar too low. No excuse too wild and no morals left to lose. But thankfully, with the off chance of truth being heard somewhere in the echo chamber, Jessica Tarlov continues to do the Lord's work, putting herself in this position where she's bound to be shouted down time and time again by inserting the truth whenever she's able to get a word in amidst the diatribe. Joe Biden is a cognitive mess. You agree? No. <laughs> you don't agree with that? No. Not I at all? No, I, I certainly think that he has slowed down from 2020. Just slowed down a little? Yeah. You want to talk? You want to talk to cognitive decline? Yeah. I'll, okay. I'll bring you my own montage. Nikki Haley mixed up with Nancy Pelosi one time, and a guy one that time. can speak for five hours straight without making a mistake. Just There's rambling no is not speaking for five hours straight, including <laughs> things like, "Look what happens when I put magnets in water, and when I beat you Obama like in 2016." No, we I don't, want... don't sound like fake chapter. I, I sound like real Jessica Tarla. <laughs> and it's not a small thing if. Joe Biden had confused yeah. Nikki Haley and Nancy Pelosi. So they have in common the first letter of their names and that he they're both a woman. He has not had an effective, uh, uh, he has not had an incident-free speech or appearance. The nominee is. If you guys think that people are sitting at home and watching Donald Trump talk about Joe Biden's going to get us into World War II, or I need an ID to buy a loaf of bread, or that we're going to buy, actually, this is all intentional. I'm trying to throw you off the scent. The man is bragging you, about you passing know, a Haley, test let me throw this that you Haley, need we're running out of time. Brain damage. Love this video? Make sure you stay up to date on the latest breaking news and all things Midas by signing up to the Midas Touch newsletter at MidasTouch.com newsletter.